Hi, I'm Caleb Giddings from Gunnuts Media. Today's video we're going to talk about low light techniques with a handheld flashlight. I'm going to be using my Terralux TT1 flashlight, this very compact flashlight. You can get it on Amazon. It has three modes. It has a strobe mode, it has a bright, slightly lower, and then barely on mode. The tail cap is a click on, click off, click, click, and I like tail cap lights like that where you actually can just click it and leave it on because I don't want to have to be constantly putting pressure on the light once it's on if I'm trying to do something else with it. In previous videos you've seen me using a weapon mounted light on my gun to do threat ID and illuminate targets. I love weapon mounted lights, I think they're great. I think that in a civilian context, a handheld light is preferable, especially for home defense or concealed carry. The reason why I prefer a handheld light that's separate from the gun is it gives me the ability to search and do threat ID without necessarily pointing my gun at something that doesn't need a bullet. When we're dealing with handheld lights, there are four techniques that I think people should be aware of that people can try out and see which works best for you. I like two of them, and those are the two that I primarily use. However, I wanna talk about all four. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the old FBI technique. So in this technique, my flashlight's gonna be in my support hand, my gun's gonna be in my strong hand, and my flashlight's gonna be up here. It's gonna be out away from my body doing flashlighty things. The uh, nice thing about this technique is it does illuminate my sights a little bit, but not quite as much as I necessarily would like. The reason for this technique originally was the idea behind it was that by holding the light out here away from my body, people are gonna try to shoot at the light, and since the light's not here, they're probably not gonna shoot at me directly. I don't know if I necessarily buy into that, but that's sort of the reasoning for it. I think my biggest objection to this is that you look kind of ridiculous when you're using it, but whatever. The next technique we want to talk about is one that I do actually use. If I'm running the gun support hand, or excuse me, strong hand only, I like to use the neck index technique for my light. So you can actually use this in conjunction with the FBI technique. So let's say I'm searching, I'm searching, and I've found my target and I want to shoot it. I can bring the light in here to my cheek extend my gun towards the target, and then fire. The reason I like this technique a lot if I'm dedicated to using the gun strong hand only is because the light will light up my sights and the target. So I have light on my sights and I have light on my target. That's handy. The next two techniques that I want to talk about are the ones that allow you to make contact with your support hand and the gun. The first one is the one that I guarantee you have seen in a movie. It's the Harry's technique. So with the light again in my support hand, I'm going to bring my hands together and I'm going to put pressure on the back of my strong hand wrist with my support hand. It's very, it's not honestly a great technique in my opinion because there's nothing actually keeping my hands together, just like some counter pressure from hand to hand, and you end up in sort of a goofy weaver stance with none of the benefits of weaver. I'm not a big fan of the Harry's technique. I don't think it works that well. The last one, the one that I do like to use, especially for competition shooting, is a modified Chapman technique. So in the Chapman technique, you're gonna hold the light like this in your hand, and you're gonna bring your hands together on the gun like this, and it almost forms a regular firing grip, and I think it works pretty well. However, I like to kind of take it to the next level, and this is why I like to use a light with a permanent on-off switch. What I'll do instead is hold the light in between my forefinger and my driving finger, like this. I can still access it for searching. I can hold it up here like this. I can hold it down here like this. I can hold it wherever I like in this two-finger grip, but if I need to shoot something, with the light on, I can immediately extend the gun and get basically a full firing grip on the gun, just like I would if I was shooting a regular grip. This is my favorite way to hold a flashlight and a gun with a two-handed grip, just like this. And it, you can see, this is a very solid grip. The only disadvantage that we have in this grip is the light points down just a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the lights out, we're going to run a target downrange, and we're going to show you how these work in live fire.
All right, guys, you can't see me right now, but you can see my target. We're gonna go through each of the individual methods that we just talked about and show you how they light up the gun and how they light up the target. Again, I'm using my Terralux TT1. I'm gonna leave it on the brightest setting to cast the biggest amount of ambient light at the target that I absolutely can. Up first, we have the FBI method. So I'm searching, my light's up here, I see the target, I extend the gun into the target, and fire. Now, what you can see, I have a decent amount of light on my sights right now. If I move the gun over so you can see it better with the camera, I still have a decent amount of light on these sights. Next, we're gonna do the neck index. Okay, up next we're going to do the neck index. So, light's gonna come on, I'm gonna index it into my cheek or neck, I'm gonna I see my target, identify it, bring my gun online, I have a tremendous amount of light on my sights right now, fire one shot. Not the best shot I've ever fired, but hey, it's still an A. Up next, this is the Harry's technique. Really, the only light that I have on my sights while using this technique is backscatter from my flashlight. So I can see the outline of my sights. I can't pick up the fiber optic or anything like that, but I can, in fact, see where they are lined up on the target. Last but not least, we're gonna use my modified Chapman method. So now I have a full firing grip on the gun. I can easily bring it online. You can see that this also gives me only backscatter lighting on my sights, but it gives me the most positive grip on the gun for shooting multiple shots. If you're serious about self-defense with a handgun, I strongly encourage you to, on your own time in your own house in dry fire training, practice these methods find one that works for you. And this isn't a one-size-fits-all solution either. One of the things that you have to deal with and have to accept is that you can use multiple techniques at multiple times. Like I said, my favorite, I hold the flashlight in my lobster claw grip or whatever you wanna call it. I get that end cap on, I'm searching, I'm searching, and then I can immediately bring the gun online into action. It's a very easy grip. It's a good way to control the gun. I can have this gun out at the low ready, be searching with this hand, and then we're on target and firing just that fast. If you have any questions, if you like what we're doing with these videos, make sure to leave a comment down below. I'm Caleb Giddings. Thanks for watching.